in a distant and second-hand set of dimensions in an astral plane that was never meant to fly, the curling star mists waver and part. See, Great Artuin the turtle comes, swimming slowly through the interstellar gulf, hydrogen frost on his ponderous limbs, his huge and ancient shell pocked with meteor craters. Through sea-sized eyes that are crusted with room and asteroid dust, he stares fixedly at the destination. In a brain bigger than a city, with geological slowness, he thinks only of the weight. Most of the weight is of course accounted for by Beryllia, Tabul, Great Tafon, and Jarakeen, the four giant elephants upon whose broad and star-tan shoulders the disk of the world rests. Garlanded by the long waterfall at its far circumference, and domed by the baby blue vault of heaven. Okay, here's what we got for you this time. We're gonna do floating terrain. Floating, floating terrain. terrain. Hey guys, welcome back to Not One Videos. This week I'm taking a little breather from my Dungeon Sewers diorama, mostly because I have a big resin pour coming up on that build and I want to make sure that everything is just right before I make a total disaster of it. But this has given me the perfect opportunity to do a quick one day build for the Tabletop Crafters Guild, Guild Build. This month's theme is floating terrain and when I heard that theme, the thing that instantly came to my mind was a build I have had in my head for a very long time. Discworld and the Great Atuin floating in space from the world of Terry Pratchett. We are massive fans of Terry Pratchett in our house, especially my wife Lucy. She has all of his books, which are falling apart because they have been so well loved. And she even attended Terry Pratchett's memorial service on the 14th of April 2016 here at the Barbican Centre in London because she had felt so much of a loss at his passing. It was actually my wife Lucy doing the voiceover at the beginning of this video. I asked her nicely and she kindly obliged to help me out, but she doesn't know what I am building and she doesn't know that it is actually a gift for her. Now as you can see in this video, yet again I have jumped into some 3D printing. This kind of goes against my MO of making things yourself, but quite frankly I am not the best sculptor and I certainly can't sculpt a realistic turtle, let alone four elephants for that matter. So this piece is again a marriage of awesome 3D technology and good old fashioned crafting techniques. This is also a good opportunity to show you guys my new hobby paint case, which I'm really excited about. I had it made by Frontier Wargaming. Anyone who watches my channel will know I am completely disorganized and messy when it comes to my paints, so I've needed a solution for quite some time. While my turtle and elephants were printing off, I decided to use the time to get organized and show it to you guys. It really is a lovely piece of kit, loads of great storage, and when you are ready to paint, you have a portable hobby space that even has a really cool overhead light so you can see your models properly. I'm just really glad that I don't have to rummage through boxes of random paints anymore. Anyway, I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys are interested in getting one of these made. It's really, really cool. Okay, all organized and ready to get on with painting these models. Both of these STL files can be found free on Thingiverse if you guys are interested in printing them off. I'll leave a link in the description below this video. But I decided to hit two birds with one stone and get the elven wood scatter pieces that were sent out to me by Dungeons and Lasers primed up at the same time. When I'm priming models, I might as well save some time and get those prepped, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on. So I am very much still developing my painting skills and when it came to painting this turtle I wanted to give it quite a realistic look so I found some beautiful reference images of turtles in nature and got to work. But then my plans of making a paint tutorial kind of section in this part of the video went a little off course. So my daughter's home today and I'm trying to paint my turtle. She wanted to paint the turtle. So you're going to paint the elephants aren't you? That's a really good job. Now you make, need to make sure to get paint all over the elephant. I am doing that. Well done, all right. That's a great job. Are you getting it all over the black? Well done. Here you go. It's actually really helping me. Here, here you go, guys. So far. Oh, good job. Now he's all great for your project. Thank you. So we need to get all four of them like that. And when you're finished with that, I'll tell you what we need to do next. Do you know what's funny? Since we started painting together, your coughs disappeared. Mm. Are you sure you were sick today? Yeah, but I'm not. Are you not sick anymore? No. Oh. Did you just not want to go to school? 
I eat this table get a bit messy. I don't mind the table getting a little bit messy. It's okay for today. Okay? Okay. We can wipe it up afterwards. This paint is easy to clean up. It was actually really nice to get in some painting time with my daughter, something I don't get to do half as much as I would like. As you can see with the turtle, I used quite a range of different greens blended in with flesh tones and some Reichland flesh shade to finish it all off and blend it all together. My daughter insisted that when it came to painting the eyes, I had to paint them blue, not black. So I obliged and in the end, I'm really glad I chose to take her advice. I think the deep blue gives the turtle a lot of character. My daughter did a great job base coating the elephants in a stone grey from Army Painter. She managed to get about an 80% coverage, which isn't too bad for a three year old. I finished up the models by doing a dry brushing in a light grey and painted all the tusks a skeleton bone colour. I then decided I wanted to give the turtle's eyes even more character, so I painted in a little UV resin and cured it just to give them that nice glossy finish. And with that, I was ready to glue it all together. I just used a daub of super glue on all of the elephant's hooves, feet, hooves or feet, and tried to stick them all together on the back of the turtle as symmetrically as I could. And I have to say that the model was starting to look a lot better than I was actually expecting. Okay, so I'm really happy with how the turtle and the elephants have turned out. Um, before I carry on with the terrain part of the build, I'm just gonna quickly tell you about today's sponsor, Archon Studios. So I spent a little time painting these awesome scattered terrain pieces from the Dungeons and Lasers Elven Woods collection, and they are actually really cool. I will definitely be using these on my own tabletop for some D&D encounters. These are super lightweight, durable, and I love the detailed vegetation growing all over the rocks. And the best part is they were super easy to paint. So head over and check out Dungeons and Lasers new project. They're so close to hitting their next stretch goal, second chance with the really cool Mushroom Circle miniature. As always, you can find a link for their project by following the link in the description below this video. Thanks to Archon for sponsoring this video. So yeah, definitely worth giving these guys a look. I'm definitely gonna be using these. These are gonna be super easy to transport for games around with my nephews and nieces and stuff. So thank you, Archon Studios. All right, let's build some miniature terrain. So this is definitely the smallest piece of terrain I have ever built. I'm used to working at a 28 millimeter scale. I have had a little dabble end scale, but this is so small that I don't even know what it's called. So let's just call it really, really tiny. As always, I'm working with a base of XPS foam, just carving out a rough shape with my hot wire cutter, making it roughly the size that it looks right for the back of the turtle, or should I say the elephant's backs. Originally, I was going to just cut some random shapes for the islands because I figured that no one would really notice, but my wife insisted that I absolutely had to make it accurate to the Discworld map. I added a little texture to all of the pieces and glued them into place with wood glue. When it came to the frozen mountains that are found at the center of Discworld, I decided to exaggerate the size just to give the piece a nice sense of depth and topography. I didn't want it to just look pretty flat, even though this is effectively a model of flat earth. Let me know in the comments below if you believe the earth is flat. It's actually quite tricky painting terrain at this scale because every stroke you make seems really bold, so you have to be quite careful not to overkill it. Basically, your dry brush needs to be really, really dry. When it came to painting the sea, I tried my best to make it look like there was some depth to the ocean by painting the central areas in a deep dark blue with a lighter blue feathering out towards the edges. So in Discworld, around the edges, there are waterfalls that flow over the edge into the expanse of space. Recently, I've taken to using a combination of polyester pillow stuffing and UV resin to give a realistic waterfall effect. This is the best method that I have come across for waterfalls, but I'm always keen to learn new techniques. So if anyone else has any better ideas for this, please let me know in the comments below. I then used more UV resin to make the oceans actually look wet and painted a feathery white trim around the edges to make a nice transition between the deep dark blue ocean and the raging waterfalls falling off the edge. I then trimmed off any of the excess polyester fiber. Now, I wasn't really happy with how the ocean was looking, so I decided to go back again, this time with some water ripples effects from Woodland Scenics. This is actually my first time using this stuff and it is really nice to work with. Once applied, you just leave it for about 10 minutes and then you can start to poke and prod it to give it that desired ripple effect for which I used a toothpick. And I am really happy with how that turned out. 
And with that, the build is kind of finished. All that is left to do is glue Discworld to the backs of the elephants and let Archu and the Great swim off into the massive expanse of space. Okay, so this was originally supposed to be just a fun little throwaway video project, something to do in between, but it's turned out to be one of the favorite things I've ever made. Uh, I absolutely love it. And I really hope Lucy likes it too. Yeah, so pleased with how this has turned out. Guys, before I go, I just wanna say a massive thanks as always to my Patreon members. Uh, you can see them on the screen down below this video. You guys are still supporting me and I really appreciate it. The Dungeon Sewer build is coming out possibly next week. I'm getting on to that resin pour in the next couple of days. So that is coming for you guys. I am going to post an extended version of my painting session with my daughter over on Patreon for you guys to see because there's some cute and funny stuff that's happening in that. But other than that guys, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project and here's just a few close-up shots for you guys. All the best guys, see you next time, bye.